The next case will be on 71-year-old female with two lesions, 40 and 35 mm 2A at the ascending column. A colonic ESD will be performed by Dr. Yamamoto. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'd like to introduce my uh, colleagues, uh, Dr. Kobayashi and Dr. Iwashita is from uh, Jichi. And the commentator is Dr. Fujishiro from Tokyo University. And Dr. Yahagi is all <laughs> <laughs> standing there too. <laughs> anyway, uh, this scope is a very new Fujifilm scope that is ECL 600 ZP7. That means, L means Lesario. Lesario is a laser technology uh, which provides uh, BLI and LCI. And uh, this one is a slim endoscope with the, the diameter of the tip is 11.7 millimeter and the accessory channel is 3.2 millimeters and it has a water jet function as well. This is the white light image and uh, recently I start the observation from the LCI. You see, th this is the LCI. This is the uh, LCI and this is the white light. With the white light image, the almost everything is orange like color, but using LCI, a uh, deep vessel becomes uh, purple and uh, mucosa becomes yellowish and neoplastic lesion becomes reddish. So it, it becomes much easier to detect lesions. And uh, this is a region which cannot be seen very well uh, with white light. Uh, here is the region, but the uh, region is not well seen. And uh, this is uh, this is LCI. Uh, still, the it's not very clear, but a little bit more easier, a, a little bit easier to recognize. And this is one region. And the other region uh, which was introduced is uh, here. And today I want to show you the ESD technique on this region. As you can see, the region, the approaching angle is almost vertical. But what I would do is uh, create a pocket from this level and go into the submucosal space. And then uh, I hopefully, hopefully I can um, go up the, the fold and dissect below the lesion. And before, then, before that, um, I want to show you the, uh, the BLI. Uh, after a lesion is detected by LCI, I change to BLI and using BLI, this is a BLI bright mode. BLI bright has a brighter image than BLI or NBI. So uh, you can see the, uh, the demarcation uh, clearer. And uh, with magnification, you can see the pit pattern with some vascular pattern. So you can recognize the demarcation even in this kind of very unclear region of S SSAP. So usually we don't put markings for uh, colorectal lesions for ESD, but this lesion is very unclear, so I will place markings. I use a flash knife, ball tip, 1.5 millimeter length. What kind of current do you use to make a marking? I use a soft coagulation mode. And today I use a VIO3, the latest version of VIO. And I set soft coagulation effect 4.5. 4 uh, that's, I don't know effect or not, anyway, 4.5. Okay, needs to out. So see the demarcation line and needle out. 
Is it out? Okay. Like this. Okay, again. Uh, in case of um, uh, making marking, uh, soft to use soft coagulation is very uh, important a point. Uh, a little strong, even if there, uh, 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 Professor Yamamoto used soft coagulation, so it's better to uh, reduce, reduce yes. your uh, power. Yes. Yeah, this is better. Uh, this is better, yes. So this is the demarcation, so need to, uh, yes. Yes, and here is the <coughs> demarcation, so I think it's here. Okay. Uh, no, let me check. So when we use a magnification, we can see the uh, type 1 pit of this normal area and then uh, uh, type 2 open pit of the uh, SSAP. Yes. Um. Professor Yamamoto? Yes. Uh, while you're uh, uh, doing markings, uh, we'll move on to the next case. Okay. Uh, and we'll come back to you uh, shortly. Yes. And can you just briefly uh, explain again your strategy? I know okay. you're going to use a pocket creation method, but... Y yes, after m uh, making a marking, I will change to the short double balloon endoscope with uh, uh, ST hood. And then uh, I create a pocket from the... I will probably make a pocket from here, and the, the, uh, as much as tangential, and then uh, go into the submucosal space. And in the pocket, I can lift up the mucosal side and go up the, the, uh, the fold, and then press down the fold and go down to the, uh, the other side. So in that way, uh, hopefully, I can dissect the submucosal uh, tissue under the lesion, uh, even, uh, even uh, if this lesion is located on the prominent fold. That's what I want to show. I changed the scope to the to a short double balloon endoscope. That is uh, EI uh, 580BT. And that has uh, 155 centimeters in the length. So you can use ordinary devices for a coronoscope. And you can get a stable condition. So. I think um, uh, in, the, in the Western countries, they use a long coronoscope that makes the uh, ESD difficult in the colon. Uh, but uh, they say that uh, Western people are too big and too um, large or obese, and then uh, the long coronoscope is necessary. But uh, if you use this 155 centimeter uh, double balloon endoscope, then you can um, perform a very good stable condition even in a, a long colon or a, a proximal colon. Okay, I will uh, explain how to perform um, the pocket creation method. This is the lesion and this is the marking I placed. So I make a, a about two centimeters opening of the, uh, the pocket. Uh, the distance is good enough, so I will make a cut on the mark in this case, okay? So, first of all, this is the, uh, this, this is the, a little, you, you make a hole with the ball tip. And the tip of the ball, the, the flash knife ball is hooked in the submucosal layer, then Move like this, slowly. And I just uh, place the overtube on the table uh, because it's, uh, it's stable already. So I don't need to push in and out uh, very often. And sometimes I just uh, leave the endoscope there and I control the knife myself and then uh, I cut like this, 
Okay. So about two centimeters. After mucosal incision, I start dissection. But at the beginning, I just use the, the knife. The sheath of the knife is placed below the mucosa and right below the mucosa and move the knife parallel. And just shallow dissection is good enough. Okay, that's because this is still a normal mucosa. And then I go in and I dissect, but it's uh, just a shallow. I don't go deep yet. Oh, I cut a little bit of mucosa. <laughs> no, no <laughs> Sorry. problem, no problem. Too, too, too shallow, that was, okay. Uh, it is important to cut just below the uh, uh, mucosa, yes. Yes. Uh, it is very that, safe. Yeah, that is uh, um, in order to go into the some mucosa space with the tip of the ST hood. So several times of um, dissection and using the uh, water jet together. Uh, is it uh, water jet? <laughs> Uh, yeah, two, 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 cent two, cent two or three, maybe. And then I can go in. Using the ST food, I can go into the submucosal space easily, like this. Okay? Then, then I can slowly go deeper. But I have to be careful because the, this was this region was on the fold, so maybe the muscle layer is right in front of you. You have to have a good orientation all the time. Even if you can't see the muscle layer, you should have a good orientation, and y you have to guess. Now the muscle layer is located right hand side, and then uh, Dr. Yamamoto nicely cut uh, some causal layer from the downside to the upside. Yes, then mm. I can push push down to the muscle side, and then you, I can see through the muscle. Uh. Now I can come back and okay, and slowly come close to the muscle layer. And so but there is a blood vessel, okay? When you find the blood vessel, you just try not to touch, okay? okay. Don't, don't, don't coagulate the vessel, just you yeah, dissect I, uh, apart from the vessel. Right, oh. I try to leave the vessel. Mm -hmm. I don't attack the vessel. So that, that is much more convenient, uh, efficient, I think. Mm -hmm. Just leave the blood vessel, and then you can coagulate the blood vessel later. Okay, here. Can you inject a solution from the knife itself? Yes, no, yes, I can. But uh, now mm. I want to inject muco up here. Oh, okay. Because I want to make the uh, submucosal tissue right above the muscle layer thicker. Mm. So the vessel come to the uh, mucosal side and you uh, inject the solution just below the vessel? Yes. yes. Below the vessel. Mm. Okay. I think the the submucosal tissue above the muscle layer inject is finer than the tissue below the mucosa. Mm. So all the sometimes there are a lot of fat tissue mm. and blood vessels. Everything goes mm. up, mm. and just clear uh, submucosal tissue is on the uh, on the muscle layer. Yeah. Okay, inject. 
mucus is viscous, so I can selectively um, thicken the submucosal tissue, deep, deep layer or a shallow layer. I don't want to um, touch the vessel, okay? Okay, then after I get a very stable condition, I can use the injection through the knife. But at the beginning, you have to be very, very careful. Uh, I want to make a very, very stable, good condition. Uh, the, at the beginning, you have to be very patient. At this stage, if you make bleeding, then the procedure becomes uh, very difficult. So I don't want to make uh, bleeding. Maybe uh, you might coagulate the blood vessel mm -hmm. if you are uh, if you worry about making bleeding. But I can I think I can separate. Mm the blood vessel from the muscle layer here. Then I can go under the blood vessel. So, yeah, blood vessel is above side. Mm. Yeah, I didn't coagulate because <laughs> I wanted to show this. <laughs> <laughs> Very precise technique. Uh, uh, I think there are, you know, this the layer, this uh, layer is the, so the, all the blood vessel and all the fat tissue uh, everything goes up, and uh, very nice, clear uh, submucosal tissue. Mm. This layer is the layer you want to um, dissect. Mm. Okay? But oh, oh. attached. <laughs> <laughs> In this case, uh, you can use uh, change to the spray coagulation with a soft one. Uh, only 0 0.7 and coagulate. Or you can use uh, co coagulation forceps. Mm. If oh. this doesn't work very well, then uh, it's better uh, not, not to pursue too much. Mm. And then change to the coagulation forceps. So this kind of precise pr uh, procedure is possible when we use uh, uh, ST food, short ST food. Yes. Mm. So in case of the wider uh, uh, food, uh, it is very difficult to uh, okay, this open. This is not short ah, ST food, this is conventional, a conventional ST food, uh -huh. yes. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, this <laughs> anyway. is the, uh, Did you change the, uh, yes, yeah, good, okay. And then uh, I coagulate the blood vessel, okay? But okay. Professor Yamamoto, so if yes. you use the conventional ST food and uh, uh, flash knife BT, so yes. it's a little bit difficult to see the chip of the flash knife directly. Right, oh. you're right. But so uh, uh, after using after uh, you are get used to using it, you can you can guess the tip of the knife. Uh -huh. I think uh, uh, similar to the uh, splash M. Do you see? Yes. Ah, I don't see the tip. Uh, actually, the I find out the length of the tip from the uh, black 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 uh, line. line. Uh -huh. Yes, so. just seeing the sheet, and you can you can uh, you can guess the. Uh, location of the tip of the knife. Mm. Uh -huh. Hello, uh, I want to show the progress of the procedure. And uh, first of all, when you use ST food, uh, the endoscopic view uh, could be limited, so you have to apply lens cleaner on, on the, uh, both sides of the uh, ST food. And, but uh, once you go into the submucosal space, in the in the submucosal space, the tissue touch the, the surface of the ST food, so the endoscopic view is very good. Anyway, uh, I, I made a pocket and then, this is the pocket I created and this is the fold I had shown at the beginning. 
uh, using the pocket creation method, I could go up the fold and then press down the fold to this way, so I can dissect this way. And even to the right side, right side on the fold, if you may go in the pocket, then you can go like this, and you can make a dissection on the fold. Okay, I can show you how to do it. So you, in order to do that, you have to have a good orientation in terms of the, uh, the muscle, uh, the structure. So this is on the fold. So go around the uh, muscle fold, fold and then you can dissect. Okay, so the, the, you have to have a good orientation on your mind uh, how the uh, colon, colonic muscle is going. But as long as you have that, then you can see the muscle layer directly and you can select the dissection plane on the muscle layer, uh, leaving a little bit of submucosal tissue. And then uh, after creating a pocket, you can measure, you can measure the, uh, the depth of the, uh, the pocket to the length of the region from outside and inside. And this is the mark. So I think this is deep enough. And this side, this is the edge of the pocket. This is the edge of the region. So th this is wide enough. And this side, I create a pocket, so, um, but I, I have to open the mucosa here. So I, I will open a little bit this um, mucosa and then um, open the pocket. But I will start opening the pocket from this side because this is the water is here. So uh, even if I cut this side, the, the region hangs down. So it becomes, uh, it, it keeps uh, good condition. But if, if I cut this side first, then the, everything falls down and makes the procedure difficult. Uh, we can change the patient's position, but uh, in, this, in this position, I think it's better to cut here first. Okay, then uh, you can move to <laughs> another room. <laughs> Okay, so let's inject. And leaving this intact mucosa, I can add injection anytime and I can make a very good condition anytime. So anytime you can go, okay? Okay, I will show you what I have done so far. As I had shown you, um, I dissected the, the submucosa first and I opened from the, the lower side in terms of gravity. This is the lower side. And opened the pocket and went uh, back side of the region as well. And went up to here. So now what's the result? The result is like this. The so lesion is already dissected and only this side remains. So I will uh, dissect this side. So when you um, open the pocket, don't cut the, the mucosa all the way down. Don't make a circumferential incision yet. Cut a little bit, about one centimeter, and that one centimeter should be dissected before the fluid goes away. As long as, as long as the uh, the submucosa, no, the the mucosa is uh, remained intact, you can add fluid anytime and make a very good good elevation. And as long as you have good elevation, the, the, the dissection is safer.
And after open the pocket, the condition becomes a little bit unstable. But uh, as long as you have a good strategy, you can manage it. And here is the blood vessel. So I coagulate. I coagulate, coagulate, then cut it. So even at this moment, you don't perform the full marginal resection of this right, right side? No. No. Oh. No, because the situation could become difficult. Once you make a mucosal in, in, incision mm. and uh, an, an area like an island is left and uh, su uh, submucosal fluid is lost, then the dissection becomes very, very difficult. Uh -huh. So that uh, must be the very important tips. Yes. So the intact mucosa makes the situation very easy. Even this short length of the mucosa, I can show you. Um, as long as the intact mucosa remains, you can add injection and you can make the very good situation, like the initiation of the ESD. Okay, so the needle out. So mucosa is intact, so I inject. You can make a maximum elevation even at the, the, the end of the stage of the procedure. OK, stop. Like this. Then you can cut mucosa safely and dissect it. So this, from here to here. Maybe this is uh, almost okay to cut the entire area, but for the educational purpose, I will cut uh, just a half. About a half. Okay, this is the edge of the region, so it's okay. And then uh, the area where the mucosal incision is made, that should be dissected immediately. Mm. Before the submucosal elevation is lost. In this way, you can keep a good submucosal elevation all the time. Sometimes the approaching angle becomes a little bit um, vertical at this stage, but as long as you have a thick cushion, thick submucosal cushion, here is the blood vessel, so I coagulate, then cut. So the uh, maybe you, you, you might think this is a tedious uh, way, but uh, uh, this is uh, very reliable uh, because you, you will not make the procedure difficult. So only uh, this part remains. Mm. And then uh, I can finish the, only this. Okay. So the, this uh, pocket creation method procedure looks very simple and easy, but uh, the Professor Yamamoto doing this procedure, uh, according to the tips and the strategy, that's why the procedure looks very easy. Yeah, mm. I, I'm trying to make the procedure strategy mm. not to make the ESD difficult. Mm. The ESD is not a difficult procedure unless you make it difficult. Mm. I think you make the procedure difficult. Mm. Losing the submucosal cushion, 
and causing blood uh, bleeding and losing your endoscopic view. Those factors make the ESD difficult. Yeah. So this strategy will not make the procedure difficult. Yeah, excellent presentation. <laughs> excellent. Thank you.